Okay, uh, you should be recording now. Okay, um, I got, I'll share my screen. Mm, how I can share my screen because yeah, there is no video feed for me anyway. My camera is broken. Okay. All right, you go for it. Yeah. Okay, I'll just share my screen then. Okay, uh, do you see it? Yep. Yeah. So the recording should be running unless I mess it up. Uh, it's rec it's recording. I've got a big recording symbol oh. on my screen. Yep, yep, same here. Okay. Yeah. I guess it's recording, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is a regular uh, JCAS Coffee Sales meeting. Today is August 14th. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, DevOps Paul Jenkins World time frame, uh, but since we have people around, we decided to meet anyway. Uh, we have uh, three contributors on the call. It's Tim uh, Sladin, who works on uh, the community group uh, for configuration as well, and me. Uh, and today, I guess we don't have any specific agenda, but we can fill it on the flight. Okay, so new releases. I guess uh, we have some, at least. Yeah, there's been two, I think, if not three. Uh, yeah. So, we'll open uh, the releases page. But yeah, uh, last meeting was uh, when we released 1.24. So, there was a number of changes there. And just one day before the security advisory, we had a meeting. So, we were unable to, to talk about the security advisory. But basically, uh, there was a release with a number of security fixes uh, inside uh, Jenkins configuration as code. So here you can see four security fixes. Uh, they are mostly related to exposure of uh, secrets uh, in plain text uh, to system logs and uh, to imported configurations. There uh, was also a fix for schema and the instance specific documentation export without uh, administer permissions. So it's something which might be impacting uh, Sladin's project, which we'll talk about later. And uh, there is also uh, one uh, fix for exposure of secrets uh, via re-exporting configuration YAMLs. So basically, it was possible to uh, define custom field in the configuration. For example, if you have permissions to edit a new or agent configuration, and then uh, when, you, uh, when admin was exporting the field, not checking exporting configuration, but checking it and reimporting it again, it was possible to uh, access all system variables and uh, passwords using that. So yeah, it was also fixed. So yeah, just a uh, few security fixes. In addition to that, in this uh, security advisory, uh, how to the Zoom panel? It's always annoying because it's on the top and uh, hides a browser windows. <laughs> okay. So in addition to these security fixes, uh, we also had uh, uh, one fix um, in the previous version. It was 1.20. Uh, so here, uh, basically proxy credentials. Um, proxy credentials is a thing you can configure in Plugin Manager uh, to manage, uh, surprisingly, a proxy, HTTP proxy across the entire Jenkins instance. So configuration as code plugin has its own config uh, or proxy configuration because we still haven't landed code patches in order to make it possible without a uh, custom patch. And apparently there was a bug before this fix uh, because um, yeah, this uh, password wasn't masked at all uh, neither in system logs nor configuration YAMLs. So now it's fixed. It was also announced uh, on uh, what was the advisory date? It was uh, July 31st. Uh, where basically right after our meeting, um, and yeah, um, uh, these were, were the fixes uh, which were announced. Um, yeah, one thing uh, to know that yeah, these fixes are breaking, so we marked uh, the release as incompatible because um, yeah, uh, uh, you might need to, to review your configuration YAMLs if there is a risk of exposed passwords or if there is a risk of uh, um, variable expressions. Uh, so that uh, you need to, uh, to review the, your configuration YAMLs and clean up them uh, manually. And also, if you use anonymous API access, for example, automatically validate your JSON schema, well, assuming it works, uh, then now you need administer permissions to do that. Okay, 
So yeah, it was one dot twenty five release. I will skip one release and probably summarize one twenty seven because yeah, it was pretty quick. Uh, so it was a flow fix for data bound configurator, which was also exposing secrets uh, to system logs uh, in some cases. So now it's also fixed. So there was a separate advisory for that because yeah, there was a follow up report. So we used an opportunity of the next security advisory to just uh, fix it and post uh, the stories with uh, security defect and JCASP. Okay. And we, between these releases, we also had 1.26 release. Uh, so, Tim, would you like to speak about it? Sure. Um, so, one of the ones was the reducing logging level, um, which was a lot of some of those security fixes makes it sort of a moot point for the logging ones. Before, by default, we uh, logged at info level every change we were doing. Um, we've changed that to log it fine, so you have to configure a logging rule uh, now if you want to debug. Um, but it means that for most cases, it's, it's not spamming your logs, and it also reduces the risk of accidentally exposing um, any secrets in the logs, which is, which is good. At least the logging spam is less, which is nice. Um, Oleg has documented the YAML export feature. Um, there was a whole lot, there was a lot of APIs that have been added at since to do um, for a long time and were never updated during the release. Um, mailer plugin there was a change to the mailer plugin back in October, I think, and the demo hadn't been refreshed since then. Um, so someone who was using the mailer plugin since then has updated our demo as it was confusing. Mm -hmm. um, I think username and password are still unsupported, but hostname works now. Yeah, there is a pending fix uh, for password, and we yeah, probably will need to create another fix in mailer. So. Yeah, I think there's an abandoned pull request as far as I know. Yeah. This is a new one. Yeah, we have it in uh, the backlog. Uh, I hope eventually somebody picks it up. It, uh, yeah, this so one. I rely, I rely on uh, data binding or the configure descriptor. So the issue with this pull request is that it uses uh, some changes which are not in merged uh, JEP. So yeah, it's a bit big for such small change. So maybe somebody will propose a simple fix later. Mm -hmm. So Nikola did a great job uh, to prototype here. He has a job 205, but yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. So if, if anyone needs this feature, a simpler pull request would be more likely to be accepted. I yeah. think is what Oleg's saying. Yeah, exactly. As a maintainer of this plugin, I will be happy to accept uh, the patch. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't got to it uh, yet, and Adrian, uh, the second maintainer, uh, also didn't have time to take a look. But yeah, eventually we'll get there, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also not used as much these days for emails. Um, remove obsolete plugin management section from reference. Ah, oh, so there was a screenshot on the README. Um, that was confusing someone. Mm -hmm. That screenshot's been refreshed. Um, and some maintainer, um, make some code styles um, for IntelliJ have been added to the repo to make it easier for people using IntelliJ. And the pull request template's been changed so that commit messages go at the top and it reads more naturally. Exactly. Thanks a lot to Joseph for this patch. As a each time I was contributing to JCask, Checkstep was a uh, obstacle for me. Well, I was spending more time on fixing Checkstep than on fixing uh, the issues themselves. So, yeah, this, uh, this fix, uh, idea users at least uh, don't need to care about that because uh, the configuration gets picked up by default. Cool. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, uh, there was quite a number of changes, mostly quality of life and documentation, but yeah, you know, all the changes are available uh, to the users. There are some pending changes, uh, but uh, nothing really specific right now. So Joseph has sp spent some time in order to finally fix Codacy, because for us, one of the issues was that uh, uh, Codacy was continuously failing uh, for pull requests. Uh, and yeah, now it's green. There's a lot of markdown issues from what I remember. 
Mm -hmm. So yeah, coverage is still not that good, but at least we get some metrics and get some, get some statistics from policy. So yeah, which should help uh, in the longer run. Yeah, it doesn't work on pull requests though. Like the the coverage, um, because the pull request is untrusted, so it doesn't pass the credential for a lot of see through. Mm -hmm. Well, it happens, but at least we get statistics uh, for the master branch, and then we can take it into account. Yeah. Okay. So, what else uh, do we have for the plugin? Any news? Hmm. Don't think so. It's been reasonably quiet. Mm -hmm. Is there any open pull requests that have had any work done? So yeah, regarding pull requests, uh, we have um, quite a number of uh, pull requests. But yeah, basically it's related to the summer because it's uh, uh, summer break time. So uh, yeah, there's the, yeah, there's the HashiCorp vault code change that's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what we plan to do there, we plan to move our vault uh, um, uh, credential uh, secret sources outside of the JCast plugin. So there are a few reasons for that. Firstly, we use the vault uh, client libraries as a dependency for JCast, which is not that natural for a generic plugin. And we would rather use a Jenkins plugin API system to make it extensible. And for us, using HashiCorp Vault plugin was a natural choice because uh, this plugin already includes a lot of features for uh, Vault, including, for example, uh, uh, credentials provider. So, yeah, there is a pending pull request. Uh, Joseph has taken ownership of this plugin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that eventually it will end. Yeah, I think it's pretty close. He's just integrating a lot of other fixes into the plugin. Yeah, there was no releases uh, of the plugin for a while, so there was some historical depth. So you can see that uh, seven days ago, Joseph just cut the release with all staged changes. Uh, hopefully, there was no serious regressions. Uh, we keep monitoring that, but yeah, then we need a new release with, which we just targets uh, JCast. Okay. But yeah, it's good that we revived this plugin in the process. It wasn't a bad bit, but definitely um, uh, it should be good. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, somewhat breaking change, but easy to migrate by installing a new plugin. Yeah, but we have a history of such uh, minor changes. Uh, so, yeah, I think we can afford that if we communicate it properly. We can, uh, again, mark the plugin as incompatible, like we did for 1.25. So, yeah, I think uh, we can easily do that. And, yeah, right now we also work on uh, plugin site improvements and uh, support of uh, GitHub uh, change logs there. So these breaking changes should become uh, more visible uh, to users uh, when they apply up updates. Even now, they get a lot of Okay. Mm. So what else uh, do we have in the queue? Mm. So yeah, there is um, a schema test um, uh, by sliding, but yeah, I think we will talk about it a bit later. And yeah, there is another pull request from me about um, um, just another security hardening for the plugin. And now it's rather about uh, fixing security issues in other plugins. Because yeah, there is a number of plugins in Jenkins which do not properly handle uh, secrets. For example, if you take this advisory, which was released in April this year, there is quite a list of plugins, uh, we, and uh, the most of the plugins in the list store credentials and plain text. So what it means, uh, they basically use uh, strings to persist the data on the list. They also usually use strings as a type uh, uh, in the API. And for configuration as code plugin, there is basically no way to determine that um, this uh, field is supposed to be secret, so that it's supposed to be a password. 
uh, GCAS plugin uh, relies on constructors, getters, setters, fields in order to determine whether the field is secret or not, to define whether it masks it. So there is a proposal to introduce additional hardening where you basically just uh, take common phrases and suffixes like password, whatever. So this list has been created uh, after reviews uh, by the security team. Thanks a lot to Daniel Beck for uh, getting some statistics from plugins. You have 20 minutes remaining. Okay. Yeah, you have 20 minutes remaining. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, basically uh, this uh, uh, list is a list of suffixes and the proposal is to just uh, thread uh, each attribute uh, which has the suffix as a sensitive by default unless uh, there is specific um, um, uh, information that uh, this attribute is safe to be exported. So obviously, maybe a kind of breaking change again, because even if uh, we uh, prevent uh, common cases uh, from being exposed, uh, for example, if you have a, an attribute called pass to password or something like that, uh, then uh, it will be masked by a JCAS plugin by default. So there are some ways uh, to actually opt out from this behavior. For example, uh, in Getter, uh, you can say that uh, the field is encrypted, and encrypted fields uh, won't be masked by default. Uh, it's useful for some secret cases. And there is also a sensitive field which can be also set uh, if needed. Uh, so yeah, basically it's a security hardening. Uh, there is no known security vulnerabilities except uh, these ones. Um, and yeah, there is a proposal to just get it merged so that uh, we have uh, even more aggressive uh, filtering of uh, secrets. The downside is that yeah, it potentially causes some regressions because yeah, it's aggressive filtering and uh, we cannot say for sure what uh, it will break. So yeah, if anyone has some feedback about this pull request, it will be much appreciated. Okay. So any other pending changes which we need to discuss? Um, I sent a pull request to Jenkins core for read-only um, system configuration. All right. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, it's a prototype. Um, just a lot of feedback. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to actually work on that uh, for the last year or so. And one of the problems in JCast is that even if you apply JCast configuration, you still have full powers to edit it from the web UI. And in many cases, it's not something you would really like to have. Yeah, I want people to, I want people to be able to see stuff but not change it. Yeah, right. Well, basically, it applies not only uh, to system configurations, same, same apply, for example. Uh, to GitHub uh, organization folders, the multi branch yeah. projects, you don't want some configurations uh, to be uh, configurable from Web UI. And yeah, the, actually, this is not a first uh, attempt to fix that. And uh, the consensus in the Jenkins community was that uh, in addition to administer permissions, we would have whatever the only administer permission. So whatever it's called. So in my team's pull request, it's called system read. Um, and yeah, basically the attempt is uh, to um, have some configurations uh, controlled by this permission so that, uh, for example, you can access uh, administrative monitors because you don't monitor, uh, you don't change it there unless you dismiss monitors and uh, so on. But yeah, the most important thing is of course system configuration and management things. You can see that uh, there are also some changes here uh, in order to make it possible. So the tricky point uh, that changing configuration is always painful in Jenkins. Uh, but yeah, I hope uh, that we will be able to enter uh, this um, change in some sense. So yeah, here uh, this permission is implied by admin. So it should be working out of the box if you use classic strategies. 
So if you use role strategy, matrix optimization, uh, it should work uh, by default. But yeah, obviously such changes are subject to extensive testing. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. The only thing is it's just where there's any permission checking, which is now exposed, which I think is some of the administrative monitors is mi are missing checks. Um, yeah, right. So I think that, uh, yeah, so this is a uh, long way to get uh, this pull request for your working. Because you have cannot, 15 minutes remaining. Yeah, it cannot be done in a single iteration. But yeah, I think that uh, we should be able to match it soon. And of course, it needs uh, accurate testing because uh, um, some actions uh, may be not protected because yeah, we know about uh, uh, some uh, changes, for example, on fixed uh, the CSRF issues and fixed permission issues. And by granting uh, read on the access, potentially we may introduce security issues for some actions which are not properly protected by system admin. So we will need to be really careful uh, with that. But yeah, it's a good uh, change for sure. Yeah, I don't think it should affect affect them because otherwise, uh, you you just if you knew the URL, you'd be able to get there. Mm -hmm. Because Jenkins doesn't protect protect anything by default. Yeah, right. Uh, so uh, we will be just uh, exposing. Adding a, be adding a link to it. Yeah, but yeah, I think that uh, it's good. Um, I mean, uh, this change, and yeah, uh, there are also uh, moderate uh, changes in the web UI. So I think uh, we should be able to land it uh, pretty much soon. Yeah, but you see, had a comment on the previous pull request about doing it in another way, but it wasn't clear to me what he was expecting. Yeah, so basically, the last pull request. Uh, just didn't work because it wasn't complete. And although many people wanted to work on this area, nobody really worked. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Can I see that this opportunity and get it over the line? Yeah. Like, if, if this approach is likely to be accepted, I can finish it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it needs pull request to some plugins as well, just so that they don't look crazy, but that can be done in stages. Yeah, we'll have to do it in stages. So probably we'll have to introduce, uh, let's say, uh, system read API plugin. Yeah. Uh, so there is already X uh, on um, that uh, read, uh, read permission plugin. So basically, we would need something like that for <laughs> the new permission with some APIs. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, this plugin would Im uh, employ reflection in order to check whether the permission is accessible or not. And if you have a similar plugin, uh, we can uh, target uh, lower versions of Jenkins code so that the uh, plugin maintainer can start adopting it. So the biggest challenge for us is that uh, yeah, it uh, targets uh, the new Jenkins code. So yeah. It take eons uh, to get adopted uh, by plugin maintainers if we don't yeah. have tools for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I added a question to that in the description on how to do that. Yeah, so my suggestion would be to just have a plugin like that with API, uh, which targets uh, lower Jenkins scores, maybe with some reflection or whatever, and yeah, then uh, to get it running. Okay. Cool. I suggest we go into Slade and soon because I need to leave in just over 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Pardon? Uh, would you like to summarize uh, your work? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I think we might run out of time here, but. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we were discussing about the way we could actually implement some of the con the schema generation because they're having a lot, quite some problems with that. So some of the approaches actually we discussed were that we could have it uh, either convert the entire thing into a like a for example we have a particular YAML file where we have all of the plugins from A to Z. Uh, along with their examples, and then just pass it via an API to a open source library. So that was if you if you if I could if you are not sharing your screen, maybe I could. Uh, 
Oh. That should be sharing to my screen. Uh, yeah, 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 you can share your screen. Yeah, just give me a second. Uh, one second, yeah, just give me a second. Uh, yeah, so let me just navigate to where I was. Okay, um, where is it? Yes, I have quite a few tabs open. Hold on. Yeah, so we were in the schema tabs. Yeah, um, can you have 10 minutes yeah. remaining? Yeah, we have 10 minutes remaining. Um, okay, uh, it's quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. Yeah, maybe it's because of the free account. Uh, yeah, so can you see my screen? I think, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe it's because we're recording because we, we use it every day, and mm -hmm. don't, yeah, don't maybe, get... maybe it might just stop recording after the 10 minutes. Yeah, it, I believe it will stop it uh, doing it for us. Yeah, uh, okay, good. So, yeah, uh, so one of the things that we plan to do is can you see my screen by the way? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what we what initially Tim and I thought was that we could initially convert it to a, convert it to a JSON somehow. So, converting a VAML to a JSON is very simple, and so we would take that JSON with all of these example values using uh, using a library. And uh, then pass that JSON and get an accurate, a more than accurate kind of a schema. So the one that currently JSON schema dot net provides us with um, a sort of a, a sort of way that I, I don't think you've seen it yet. So if you have a look at this screen here, yeah. So if you give it a particular JSON, you would get a pretty pretty accurate JSON schema. Okay, I'll create the host now. So yeah, so we would get a JSON schema like this. But the problem in this was we would need to actually fill every single every single one every single value in the credential uh, in a particular plugin and then then have it uploaded. So so we kind of uh, eliminated this option. The other option that we kind of discussed was yeah this one the one where we um, where we convert the schema dot class dynamically. Now that's that's very very difficult because as far as I read about it. It involves bit manipulation and stuff to convert to write a class on its own. That would be, I mean, that would be hazardous because then we would have to construct the subclasses and then that's that's kind of that's very very difficult. So, so that that was that was out as well. So I think the last approach that we recently discussed was this one. Um, yeah, the one way we actually use the VAML export. So I think Tim thought he would explain it to me. I think I think you would you were going to. I think fill me in on how exactly are we going to use that. I tried skipping through it by a debugger. I went through the entire like code of the VAML export and stuff. So um, if you could have a look, yeah. So I did go through it, and if I'm not wrong, does a C node actually hold an attribute value? Does it? Because as far as I see, uh, it has some sort of a mapping, right? Is that what? Yeah, it holds a node. Yeah. So. It holds the node. Every single, every single one in the in the VAML file. For example, who bar whatever. It will hold the key and the value. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So exactly how you? I think we were discussing on exactly how we could use this um, in the uh, in generating the schema. So I think yeah, if you could elaborate, that would be cool. Yeah. I mean, I could. It was probably easier just to walk through from the top how the code works a little bit. Um, but the base bit is that this this is slightly different from this. Uh, it's a bit different from the export in that export's looking for values to um, get in their types and export them. Whereas here we just want we want all of the potential ones. But I think the code should be reasonably similar. Um, and maybe if I share if I um, open it up and just then share my screen for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. One second. I'll just I'll just uh, stop this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, ten uh, the fourteen minutes uh, limit has been removed, so yeah, we have more time if needed. Yeah. Cool. No rush. <laughs> Thanks to them for the present. I think you get that one time. <laughs> no. uh, I'm just trying to find it. There we go. And shit, just stop. Cool. You should be able to see it. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, okay, so 
It's a huge code behind. Um, okay. So for this one, it's useful just to start at the top. Um, so this is where the web UI comes in for um, export. Um, one thing to be familiar with is the root element configurators. So you will have seen a few different root elements. Um, you'll see Jenkins, security, credentials, uh, tools, and unclassified. You have five minutes remaining. Um, unclassified means it's not in another category. Um, but these are, um, there is a global configuration category in Jenkins core. Uh, where I think there's an annotation or part of your extension that you can say that you belong to a category. Um, and if you don't do anything, then you end up in the unclassified category. Um, so if you go, so this is a Jenkins core class. Um, and these are the ones configured in, Gen in the default. It's unclassified and security. Um, it's, an ex it's an extension point as well. So, um, yeah, tools and credentials um, come in via the extension point. Okay. Um, so that's good to be familiar with. And there's a global configuration category configurator in uh, configuration as code plugin. Okay. Um, and that will configure, um, that configures all of the uh, categories. Okay. It runs a, so this is the, so this is describe. Um, we do filter, we filter some descriptors out. I think, okay, we filter one descriptor out. So this is a hack to um, remove a credentials provider manager that just doesn't really fit in. We tried to fix it properly, but uh, it was just a bit too confusing. Um, so there's a little hack here at the top to remove dodgy, dodgy descriptors um, that don't work too well with how our setup is. Um, we report um, some things we can't handle and then we run we run a descriptor configurator over it I've not really looked at this one before um, Okay, so, so, okay, so Basically, yeah, this is it's picking up from the YAML file, right? Whatever whatever descriptor you have for example docker API, whatever you are yeah, is that right? Um, is that right? Because Because yeah, as far as I've seen, it does go through the entire, it goes through uh, the entire process, right? So this bit here looks like it's just trying to, um, it's trying to map a symbol to a descriptor. Um, oh. And it's also to add a patch so that uh, we look them up case insensitively. So it doesn't matter how people pass, um, pass their symbol name in the YAML file, they can do, yeah. In the case of Slack, they can do Slack notifier or all, all lowercase, uppercase, camel case. Um, yeah, so it's just to make it a bit more flexible. Um, um, so after your configurator, you have the configuration context, I think. So target components. Right, so yeah, we have a few different configurators and some custom configurators as, as well. Um, so these are the custom configuration configurators that are coming up here. Um, I think so. The, the main configurators are the data bound configurator and the primitive configurator. Yep. Um, that's where most of the work is done. So the data bound is the, is the standard setup where you've got a data bound constructor and data bound setters. Um, so here we look up the constructor using reflection. Um, you have only one minute remaining. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Um, yeah. Right, so, and this is quite an important bit. We're using the parameter names and the constructor. Um, so we've got all the fields here. Um, okay. yeah. But I mean, basically the idea is that 
we have these APIs here already for introspecting the classes and yep. we should be able to um, from here construct the field names and um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, field names and types. Uh, so basically, uh, if I so for example, if it's a credentials plugin or maybe yeah, maybe take the Docker Docker plugin or whatever. So maybe it has yeah. a it has a single it has subclass, right? So for example, if I wanted to access the Docker API and would access the URI in it, so that would it would have uh, more than one indentation, right? So how how is that how is that handled here? I mean, I think there was an example I put in the data chart, right? So if it has indentation, how is that managed? So with subclasses, um, you need to add a symbol which says which one you want to use um, if there's multiple implementations. Um, so in the Azure VM Agents plugin, you've got um, you've got multiple different retention strategies um, for how you want the VMs to be kept. You've got like run once, you've got keep around for 60 minutes and you've got never delete. Um, and each of those have got um, a symbol. And so you need to, you have to add another uh, field in the YAML one line down saying which, uh, which type that you want. Okay. So I think you always specify um, for the subclass if you've got different options. Okay. Um, okay. I'm probably running out of time here. Um, <laughs> so if you've got any um, thoughts, Oleg, I think it's fine. Uh, so yeah, this uh, description is quite complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, you use existing frameworks, it should help us. And you're taking uh, the experience with uh, the recent security fixes. We can probably start refactoring this code, maybe moving common methods and common, common tweaks to utility classes. So it might help in the future. But yeah, right now, just uh, utilize what you have. And uh, there is no objective to make uh, JSON schemas ideal after the first iteration. So, yeah, if you just move uh, some baby steps, uh, I think it would be a better for us. Yeah, even just start with constructor parameters and ignore optional parameters, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Start maybe. simple. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe we can get that done. Cool, and you just, just reach out on Gitter. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. I've got to go now. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So, yep. see you next week, I hope, or if you schedule everything. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, too. Bye.